Te Wero 2017, Inspiring Māori Leadership in Education. Ahoi uh, anora, tēnā koutou. Tēnā tātou e whakawhaiti nei, rungi tēnei kaupapa a tāhua, te kaupapa e kōrero ana uh, mō ngai tātou, Māori mā, ahakoa, uh, nō tēhea iwi, nō tēhea uh, hāpuri, nō tēhea wāhi, uh, o tēnei uh, rohe o te tairāwhiti āpata nō ki roto o Tūranga Nui Ākiwa, a haere ake ki te whānau apa nui, uh, ki, ki taku mōhio. Nō reira, uh, kia koutou katoa, tēnā koutou te hara mai nei te tautoko tēnei kaupapa. Tēnā koutou, ia koutou i roto o koutou kura, e afi, e tiaki, e whakāko, ngā tamariki mokopuna katoa. Ko te kē taku tau kete, uh, aku pepeha, Nā reira, mōhio koutou um, ko ngā whakapapa uh, ka heke mai ki au, uh, mai i o uh, ia praurangi me tahu pōtiki me te tipuna kōka a uh, hamo te rangi. Ko enei, tēnei au e mihi kia koutou uh, tēnei ahi-ahi wera rawātu. Nō reira, ngā mihi nui kia tātou. Ai, kei te tika, me poroporo aki tātou ki a rātou kua mene atu ki te pō. A ko te tikanga, a haere, haere, haere atu rātou, hoki mai kia tātou, ngā kanohi ora, ngā waihotanga iho, a rātou mā, huri noa i tō tātou whare. A kei te ngā kaitiki o Whiripoka, tēnā koutou e manaki nei, a tēnei hui i tēnei rā. A, hoi anora, Moi o tātou ko te wiki o te reo Māori tēnei. Ai, e tautoko ana ngā kōrero me karawhiua te reo Māori i ngā wā katoa. Uh, hoi anō, ko te, ko te āhua nei, kāre tātou i te tin o rata, te, a rata atu ki tērā whakāro, no te mea, ko te nui o ngā kōrero o te nui ngā o te wā, kei rotu i te reo pākeha. Nā, i haere au ki te whare wānanga o Waikato. Iau i reira, Ko aku uh, kai whakāko, ko tāti moti, karetu, ko wharehuia, Milroy, uh, ko tērā tangata rongo nui tino um, kai ngāko au ki aia, arā ko John Rangihau, uh, ko Murumāra, ko e tahi atu. Ko tahi te kōrero uh, wā rātou katoa, mehe mea kei te pringi tātou, kia ora te reo, ko te tikanga me kōrero. Aha ko heaha, me kōrero. Engari ko uh, tētahi o aku regrets, kāre, kāre tāia hau te, te whakahua pai te reo Māori i ngā wā katoa, āhua pipi nōt, uh, taku um, vocabulary. Engari mōhio au i a hau i, i, i rotu i te tūranga minita, i a wiki ka, ka haere au ki runga i a te karere, te kaia rā nei, āhua whakamā tautau te ao, iau. Ne? Oh, hika, ka, kāre tērā mōhi o te kōrero mai. Oh, hika mā, tapepe tōna reo. Oh, hika, he, ko te mita tērā o ngā jipra, kāre rā nei. Ērā maka kōrero katoa. Hoi anō, ia wiki, haere tonu, haere tonu, haere tonu. A nā reira, e tautoko ana te reo, āko heaha. Um, I was asked to talk about, um, well actually I've just been darting backwards and forwards with Nori saying, you know, what is it you really want me to talk about here because there's so much that I could talk about. And um, she reminded me that it is a challenge, uh, challenges that you, we are setting for ourselves in particular around Māori leadership and in particular around ensuring that our uh, tamariki mokopuna have a great education have an enjoyable experience of their education, learn and achieve and have themselves reaffirmed to themselves. And so that's what we are all here for this conference to be discussing. I've just completed about my sixth career chapter. Um, and uh, you know we hear a lot about the fact that our kids are now learning for jobs that haven't yet been created and that the rate of change is exponentially speeding up. Well, here I am in my fifth decade um, on my sixth career and I had no idea what I was going to be doing. So everything that I have been able to do and I have had the most wonderful opportunities and experiences have all stemmed from coming from a very strong whānau 
immersed in a cultural context with no apology for who we are and a great education. That's it. That simple. And so I took that, 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 that idea, those experiences into being Minister of Education. It has been the best job I have ever had. Also, the hardest job I have ever had. I thought being a fleeso in my uncle's shearing gang and getting us to strike um, um, was pretty hard at the time, but then I was 18 and every experience is relative. So I absolutely have loved and um, been honoured and humbled by having been, had the opportunity to be Minister of Education. And I brought into that role the experience I had. And so what I found when I came into the system, first of all, by the way, I'm also the daughter of a woman who would have had a, whatever you can get beyond a doctorate in system thinking. My mother, Hedia Takeakea Reedy, was one of the best system thinkers and system practitioners that I have ever seen. Everything was a system from which side of the paper a child should write their name when first learning to draw. A system thinker from using that same example, never providing for those children only a square piece of paper, as if that's the only kind of frame a child might draw in. Um, all sorts of a system about which colours um, sat next to each other, a system on how if you took out these things, how did you put them away? Everything was system thinking. And for those of us who've had preliminary introduction to coding, coding is system thinking made visible. And so um, whakapapa is system thinking. Whakapapa is an inexorable identification of who we are connected to over and over and over and over again. It is a systematic way of thinking. So naturally, when I um, became Minister of Education, or at least naturally for me, I wanted to look at the system because when I became Minister, um, too many kids were failing. And too many of those were Māori, and too many of those were our boys. And we still know that that is a challenge for all of us. But for me, it was completely unacceptable that there should be a systemic and systematic failure of particular cohorts of kids. And it had to be that the case because ahako piki, ahako heke, if you look back through the history at the Hayata, uh, is a compilation of Māori education data, mai no, you will see that there was constant, almost expectation and acceptance that there would be Māori failure. It was just a question of how much. And so when I became minister, for instance, and we set a better public service target of 85% um, of 18-year-olds having at least the minimum NCEA2, Māori had a statistic, an appalling statistic, of 43% in 2008. Not 1998 or 1958 or 1938, but in 2008. Less than half of all Māori kids were leaving our official, formal, publicly funded education system without the minimum qualification. Unacceptable. Um, we now have Māori achievement rate at 75%. It's nearly doubled. Is that good enough yet? No. But what I focused on was how did we generate a system that would support success and achievement for every child, and not one that relied on the minister of the day being committed to kids being successful. How did we rewire the system to make that possible. So I read all the research, I'm a policy wonk, this is what I do, I love reading data, detail, research, evidence, counter evidence, and all of that sort of thing. And the four most compelling factors that make a difference for a child's education, two in school, the quality of teaching and the quality of leadership. And leadership is one of the ones we hear, well, it is the core um, kaupapa of this conference. And the two out of school, is the strength of family whānau engagement in their children's education and the expectation that their home community holds of and for them. Really simple, 
really, really simple, and why it is that the success I've had is also linked to exactly those things. My mother was up at Manutahi Māori Primary School making sure that her kids, and there were a lot of us, in every classroom were getting the best possible. Hendiriata's mother was quieter, but she was there baking kai for fundraising. The kaiwais, the foxes, the people I went to school with all came from large families, all had parents who wanted the best for them, all thought education was absolutely a number one priority, except in shearing, crutching and um, other seasons. Um, and, and they also had utter faith in the teachers and principals at the school utter faith in them. And so during my time as Minister of Education, I focused on those four factors, everything that I did. But what I found, and I'm still concerned to ensure that we systematically embedded, that too much of the conversation, nevertheless, is still about the adults. It's still about how teachers and principals feel. And uh, look, you're entitled to have feelings, you're human beings, and, and you are the core factors that make a difference for quality of um, teaching and learning experience. And so if you look, at, for, first of all, if you look at the Tewero program, you will see we now publish PAI, Public Achievement Information Data. It's real, you'll see that it's not just in percentages, it's in actual numbers of kids. Because when you see you're talking about that 80% that, um, means 52 kids, you can find those 52 kids. So one of the things that I really embarked on right at the beginning was how did we make sure we had meaningful and useful data? How did we give objective feedback to ourselves that we are making a difference kid by kid by kid? Sorry, whenever I went on radio talkbacks, if I ever said kid, you could, you could just, the phones would ring hot. Would you just tell that Minister of Education that a kid is a baby goat and you should be talking about children? Um, so it is all about the children. Um, so whatever it is we call them, the point is they are the point of our education system. So pay, which is another uh, little um, idiosyncrasy of mine, was that I tried to give acronyms that amounted to Māori words. Um, because I wanted to generate, you know, um, positive um, embrace of Māori words. So just about any acronym that I was involved with, um, and that is why ORA is the Outcomes Reporting and Analysis Framework and so forth. Um, but there's a funny story. When we were thinking of pai, uh, I was saying to uh, one of my queer Pākehā, who was one of my best advisors while I was a minister, what name shall we give this? Because I hate ugly acronyms. And ac the sector, like any others, is a very acronymous sector. Everything turns into acronyms. And I said, so it's public information. And she said, well, we can't have public information, school and systems. <laughs> and I said, quite right, Jan, we can't have that. So I said, why don't we start with the acronym and then fit what we mean to it? So we picked pay. Okay. Public achievement. And so in there, it's real data. It's collected. It's yours to use. It's meaningful. It's not about catching you out as teachers or principals or catching kids out. It's about catching them in. It's about catching them in. Saying, well, if there are 29 kids we're looking for here who are not doing well in maths, who are they? And we've had this whole mantra from numbers to names to needs. In the government, we know the numbers, but you should know their names and you should know their needs. Okay, so the challenge is constantly, and that's what the communities of learning or kahui ako are about. Again, we know from all the research that transitions are where kids can falter or drop out of the system. Whether it's transitions from early childhood into new entrants, uh, to the next class, from primary or year six to intermediate, from year eight to secondary, Whatever those transitions are, we know from the research and from your own anecdotal experience, that's where kids are most vulnerable. And yet, kids are left to navigate them, or their whānau, who themselves don't feel that confident quite often. And so the community of learning kaupapa, the kāhuiako kaupapa, is very much about saying, these young people have a whole journey of about 18 years, some less, some more, 
in the New Zealand formal education system. Why is it broken up in this unitized, commodified way? Why don't we make sure we smooth the runway for these little jets so that they can trundle along them, pick up speed, and take off? My girls used to laugh when I'd be at home, you know, saying to them, you know, four out of five isn't enough. It's five out of five. Every Kiwi kid should fly. And they said, Mum, you know that Kiwis can't fly. And I said, that's right. <laughs> so I'm talking about going past you know, the impossible and making it happen for every young person. So, so that's what that's all about. It's about how do we streamline our system to support them. So now I'm going to come to a bit of a challenge because um, it is commonly um, teachers and principals, uh, NZEI, PPTA, NZPF, Māori Principals Association, who have I missed out, PPTA, um, all of the teacher unions have talked to me through my period and continue now about workload. The workload that burdens the professionals and I agree with that. But honestly, guys, you've got to be some of the hardest people to persuade to adopt easier and more systematic ways of doing things. <laughs> and what we've found again in the research is that most teachers don't think anyone can do it better than them. <laughs> Plan their stuff, deliver their stuff, account for their stuff. And you know what? That's not true. It isn't true. If that was true for your system but wasn't true for anyone else, you know, we'd, we'd have a pretty mucked up world. And so, for instance, and here I'm going to get political, and this is a very political time, but I've been saying this for the last nine years, so, you know, it, it, it's not that I've chosen these two weeks of the last election cycle to have it. I'm absolutely for national standards. Absolutely for it. And here's the thing, guys. National standards, all it does is provide the capture of whether or not a kid is at the stage they, they could or should be. You choose what's taught, you choose how it's taught, you choose when it's taught, you choose what assessment tool you use, you choose how often you use those assessments, and you report it. That's all national standards is. So to make it the some kind of ideological thing is rubbish. It is rubbish. Because now we can see and capture progress. Yes, we absolutely know that kids do not have a learning arc that is in some kind of um, you know, direct uh, increase every year. We know that. However, if that's the case then, why are, we, why are we so concerned that we have communities of learning where kids should have their own pathways as opposed to this year class and that year class and the next year class? The whole system is predicated on there's a certain amount of learning done every year. And actually the New Zealand curriculum and the marotanga is predicated on that as well. And some kids go faster, some kids go slower, some kids go in spurts and jumps, some kids really slowly, um, other kids, you know, through the middle, whatever it is. But the point is, you're the professionals in the classroom. So I want to come back to workload and its relationship to um, national standards. So the criticism was that it was only ever about summative results. Why isn't the government interested in formative? Well, we are, but more importantly, you should be. More importantly, you're the ones in the classroom making assessments for learning, not assessments of learning all the time, but for learning. Having assessed this, what difference should we now make? So when we designed with the sector the progression and... Um, what's the C for? Consistency, Consistency um, tool. Well, well, now it's boycotted. But, but then you want to talk about workload. It's an online platform capturing your material benchmarked against exemplars designed by your peers based on the New Zealand curriculum. Or there's the learning progression frameworks. Or, given that we know that we all learn by anchoring into something that we are familiar with, there's the local curriculum tool. There are so many tools available, obviously not yet all that need to be available, but the resistance to them while still talking about workload, can you hear my voice rising? Te mutunga mai o te kuare, nera. 
I mean, honestly, these things help us to do the job better. They lessen workload. They allow us to focus on really what the data, the information is telling, together with your professional judgment. That is never displaced in any situation. I'm just conscious that I've got, um, you know, only so much time. Um, so my, my challenge to you is, don't talk about workload unless you're prepared to change the way you load your work. Okay, truly. A. B. Kati te kororo mo te hono tanga i wainga nui ya tato, te fanaunga tanga i wainga nui ya tato. If we are not prepared to do some team teaching, some changing the ways that we operate, moving from one teacher with a transactional pedagogy to actually how do we get this more dynamic ecosystem going. Now those of you who are already doing that will be sitting there defensively thinking, oh, we've been doing that for years. <laughs> you know, hasn't she been to our school? So, 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 <laughs> so in any audience, you are never going to get it exactly right when you are making statements. So this is not meant to offend you, this is meant to challenge you. And to think about it every day, is there some way I can change my practice that lightens my workload, makes me a happier professional? Because honestly, if you are miserable, get out of teaching. Seriously, because our kids get one shot, and they should only get one shot, of a good quality education. And they deserve to be around people who want to be there, who are themselves growing their own practice, who are themselves investing in their personal development, who are themselves dissatisfied with not improving every day their own approach to teaching, who are themselves supporting each other. I can tell when I got, got really good at this going into staff rooms, who was in which group. You could just see it immediately. I could tell who was going to just attack me because they would be the PPTA delegate. Um, you know, I mean, honestly, it's, it's like when you go onto a marae, right? And you look at the pai pai and you make a judgment, we're going to be here for hours. <laughs> right? Or, you know, they're not going to talk about anything relevant to this hui because they're just toe para up. So, so all, I'm, just, I'm just saying, that's, that's true. So, we can all read an environment. I'm going to leave enough time for questions if, if you do want to ask any. Um, but I just want to now go on and talk about, well, from my point of view, um, one of the things that uh, I think the National Certificate of Educational Achievement is outstanding. I think the New Zealand Qualifications Framework is just magnificent. The New Zealand education system, its architecture, is better than anybody else's in the world. And you might think, oh, that's purple prose, you know, she's laying it on a bit thick. <laughs> no, if you, the problem for us is we lose, use about 10% of its potential. Why? Because to get system shift, you do have to push hard enough and have enough people prepared to move to the new system, or a system corrects itself. All you science teachers will know that that's what happens in, you know, that science-y stuff that you... <laughs> <laughs> but I can't think of it off the top of my head, but, you know, it reverts because of, um, you know, being in, in momentum and all of that carry on. Anyway, what our system did when NCEA was introduced was quickly revert itself to school C, UE, and bursary. They might be called NCA 1, 2, and 3, but what happened? Instead of it being available according to when a child, a young person, is ready to do their credits, no, 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 you're going to do uh, NCA 1 in year 11, because that's when we did school certificate. You're going to do NCA 2 in year 12, because that was when we did UE. Well, you do UE as well. But you get my point, right? Very little changed in the structure and approach of our education system. Now, one of the things that I really wanted... To, oh, hang on, we're live streaming, eh? I just better be careful. <laughs> OK. There is no reason why year seven, eight, nines can't start accruing credits. 
No reason. If you have a look at NZQA's strategic vi vision, it's assessment online, anyone, anytime. Assessment online, anyone, anytime. Now, when that's possible to implement, and some of you may be participating in their trials, why would kids say, but I'm going to wait till year 11, you know, when Mrs. McClutchy is do teaching me? <laughs> why wouldn't you say, and parents, and teach in a, in a triangulated conversation, say, Mariana is ready to do her credits for NCA, whatever, da 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 da, -da. right? And then this is, because this so is related to workload as well. I'm told how stressful it is coming up to exams. Why do they all have to be at the same time? You know, I was at a hui in Manawatu with the Manawatu Wanganui Taranaki, I think, teachers or principals, and they were saying it's really stressful, um, you know, around September, October, November because of exams, and so would I get rid of NCEA 1, which seemed to be a big jump to me, and I said, or we could just change the way and time of when these are done, exams are done. We could have them throughout the year when the student themselves are ready. Oh, no, that's not what we were asking for. <laughs> so, so again, that's how the system has been organised for the adults. But timetabling, timetabling is about um, putting into units the teacher's time. That's what timetabling is about. And so we get this, this terrible sort of conflict at the interface between trades academies, you know, off-school off ground type learning situations. Kids start to think, oh, well, you know, what's the point going to do that because when I come back I have to do all this catch-up stuff. You know, a number of schools are now reorganising themselves to be much more responsive to the personal pathways of the individual student. But it takes the village, the ecosystem of the community of learning, the kahui ako, to effect that. The amount of power you have in your hands is incredible. And I'm saying all of this, uh, I should have started by saying this, the enormous respect I have for teachers. Now, now you all think, oh, yeah, well, sorry, here am I telling you what you think. <laughs> Because you used to get 30 second sound bites of me on television, the 30 second sound bite that the media had looked for to most particularly, because you know, the number of times I'd meet people and they'd go, you're actually quite nice. <laughs> you know? uh, oh, you know, and I'd say, well, no, hold on, you know, those ears and a tail will come out shortly. Um, but also because I never fitted anybody's pigeonhole. You know, I'd get not enough, I'm not, I'm too Pākehā for Māoris and I'm too Māori for Pākehās. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That, that, that was it because I don't know if you, you saw one interview I did when, when the um, interviewer said to me, are you really Māori? Like, I felt like saying, are you really blonde? But anyway, <laughs> the point is, no, no, but that is personal and offensive. And also, who gets to decide how Māori you are? I mean, who does decide that? Um, I remember going to... Uh, we, oh, actually, hang on, let me talk about should te reo Māori be compulsory? So I was invited um, by Huinga Tawira to talk to them last year, all the university, Māori university students from across the country. And my darling daughters and nieces were all a quiver with tension that, um, you know, how would I be treated by this group, their friends, or how would I treat this group, and, you know, all of this sort of thing. And so I said to them, uh, you guys all probably think I'm a ballhead because I refuse to make te reo Māori compulsory. And they go, yeah. <laughs> and um, as if also I just have the power to just decide these things. Um, and so I, I said to them, how many of your iwi have made your real compulsory? None. I said, how many of your rugby or netball teams have made te reo compulsory? None. Okay, 
How many of your whare wānanga, your, where you come from, have made it compulsory? None. Okay, then how many come from a whānau that has made it compulsory? None. I said, okay, but you want the government to make this compulsory across the country? Yes. I said, okay. Um, okay, let's go to the practicalities. There are 2,500 schools in New Zealand. Let's say, on average, we had two kayako Māori for each school. That's 5,000 kayako. I said, at the moment, we don't have enough to staff the number of kura kaupapa, reo rumaki that we have. But let's say that. How many of you are training to be teachers? About seven. How many of you seven are training to be kayako i te reo? None. I said, you know, guys, there isn't a Māori teacher planet out there that if only <laughs> the mean government would say, yes, it's compulsory, and they'll all get on their spaceships and come down, and then we'll all have, you know, te reo Māori. And so this idea that, therefore, I must be against it, so very quickly, um, I stood on streets getting petitions to make te reo Māori an official language and got spat on and abused. Uh, I worked with a group to get iwi recognised formally in the census so that there would be a constitutional recognition of it. Uh, I was one of the first people in New Zealand to do my master's thesis in te reo Māori and it took two years to find someone to mark it. When I decided that uh, I would be having my gorgeous daughters, and my husband came along for the ride, um, we, we, we decided we wanted our girls to grow up with te reo o Ngāti Poro, not just regular Māori, te reo o Ngāti Poro, as their first language, as their first language. So we packed up and left our jobs in Wellington and we moved home to the tribal homelands, to Ruatoria, for five years so that our girls would grow up speaking te reo o Ngāti Pro, feeling the context of te reo o Ngāti Pro, knowing their tipuna, their whanaunga, their marae. So when people say, oh, well, she's just, you know, opposed to te reo Māori, no, no, I practice what I preach. Ahakoa i rotu i te reo Pākeha, ahakoa i rotu i te reo Māori. Do I want our country to become Māori speaking? Absolutely. I have always said I would love our country to become bilingual. But for that to happen does not rely on a government decree. We have to speak te reo. There is nothing stopping you in your schools now offering te reo. Nothing. You will be funded for it for any full-time student who wants to take te reo, that student is funded. There is nothing stopping any school in this room offering te reo. Full-time, from the feeder, kohanga, play centre, kindergarten, all the way through, nothing. If you need me to announce it, I'm announcing it. <laughs> okay, I have to stop because my Taina just said so. <laughs> and she used the third official language of New Zealand. <laughs> so I'm just going to finish on um, my one regret. Well, I have many, but I try... No, that's not true, actually. I tried to take lessons out of everything that I, you know, stumbled into, over, around, got hit with, or whatever. I did try to take lessons from that, and this, as I said, remains um, the best, best uh, career I've ever had. Um, but my regret is that I left it so late in my tenure before I came back to Tairawhiti. Why? because I was so intent on not opening up another field of criticism that I was biased towards my own area. So I did the opposite, and then didn't come until my last year. So I apologise for that. I was busy trying to manage so many fields at once, but I also knew that, um, you know, a visit is, what's that? That's just symbolic. 
what I was doing, um, well, sorry, I don't mean to be dismissive, but um, so what I focused on more was how did, in my, my time, make the system work better? Any of you who've done DIY projects where you want to go to what the colour of the wall is and what furniture will look nice, you know that you have to get the sewerage done first, you know that you have to get the wiring of the electricity done, you know the structural foundations and all of that well before you can get to how do you decorate it. And so, unsexy though it has been, that's what I've focused on, is all of that, the system level stuff, because every kid, every day, in every school, kura ahorane, should be getting the best education possible. Now, I can't make that happen, but you can. You can, you, you have, you are, and you must continue to do so. So, thank you all very much. My main wedo, in case you lost it in all of this talk, <laughs> is that it's all about the children. It's all about the students. And that you adults, there is a lot available to help you lighten your workload, improve your practice, be better uh, at delivering whatever your teaching special, uh, specialisation is, and be a lovely person to be around for our kids. <laughs> and I don't want us to underestimate that, eh? You know that with a tweak of the eyebrow, well, you know when your husband does that, when you say, oh, shall we go out to dinner? And he goes, oh, yeah! You know that, that you know, and kids know. So, so that's that's uh, what I am saying to you. It is all about our children. Our children can get better and better and better, but it is directly related to the quality of leadership and teaching, the strength of family and whānau engagement, and the expectations we all hold of and for our children. If you look at those four factors every time you are doing something, then the research tells you it'll make a difference. Okay, kia ora. Thank you very much. Usually in Raka Pro, if the man speaks too long, Ina Chudel and other people come off the veranda and come and shut him down. So I've been told just to move in behind him here and just to put the brakes on him, but I just do want to really acknowledge her. And I just thought of four things she said, community, community support, our community expectations, and we were raised in a community that had huge expectations for us. Play Centre was one of the most wonderful initiatives that ever happened. Yeah. We went to Play Centre together. Well, yeah. she was a further ahead than I was, I was going to nappies. And we had wonderful mums and aunties and nannies all around us, nanny mana, people who went and helped Aboriginals in, in um, Australia to do all that kind of stuff. Fano support while she said it all, and it wasn't just her own Fano, but all the other Fano around us. Everyone was an auntie or an uncle, you couldn't get away with anything. <laughs> Quality of teaching, PP North at uh, Manutahi Māori School. We had two teachers. One was Lil Keelan, who was as cool as a cucumber. And my mother said, you never knew whether she was growling or crazy. <laughs> We had another one, and I'm not going to name her because one of you might be related to her, but she was fierce. And, you know, I really endorse what she said. When you've got someone who believes in you and supports you and doesn't whack you with a ruler or throw a duster at you or um, criticise you, you've got, um, you've got a great start. And so we had and three. Then next time after PP North, what comes after PP North? PP ones. From a one. And then we had Queen Tafai next up. So we were well supported. And our leadership all in our whole life, we had wonderful, wonderful leaders. Um, people on the Marae, people in our community, people in community organisations. And Kiawane, Kokwiki Pakatina Natanga, Urato Ma, Kongaruatu, Tirohanga Tanga Te Gene Wa. We were fortunate, I just want to finish off this, um, my mother made, well I never knew they were, we called them crunchies, but Pakias called them mouse traps. So my mother would put a piece of white bread in the oven at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> with mark, with Vegemite or cheese and maybe a little bit of bacon, and when they came out they were nice and crunchy, and these fellas had Māori bread sandwiches, 
and we would swap those and it was just the most idyllic life. They had, <laughs> they had our crunchies and we had Maori free sandwiches. <laughs> went over my time, I was 44 minutes and I had 45. <laughs>